Hi, and welcome to another episode of World Beyond Belief. We're happy to have you here, and we're very excited because we have a brand new author editor who has come to join us. Her name is Kim Kamala Ekman, and she's just edited slash wrote a new book called So What Can I Do? And I spent yesterday, a good part of yesterday, reading it. It's a fascinating read, and I'm really looking forward to talking to her about this book. Welcome to World Beyond Belief, Kim. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's it's our pleasure totally. Tell us about tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to write. So what can I do? Um well, first of all, I, I feel like I'm an editor because the people involved in this book, they are the ones that have contributed with uh, these amazing uh, uh, words and uh, knowledge that they have. So uh, I came up, the idea came to me spring last year because I feel there's a lot of uh, people walking around being fearful and uh, feeling hopeless and not trusting the government, not trusting politicians, the bank system. They don't know where to turn anymore or who to trust and what to do. So uh, because I've been kind of reading and interesting, uh, interested in the alternative news, uh, media and reading a lot for the last 20 years, not trusting the TV broadcasts and CNN and BBC and so on. So I thought, how can we get the other other people that have been digging into this information for years and years out there in an easy way? Because the internet these days, normally people kind of feel that there's something wrong and they can't trust the news, for example, any longer, but they don't know where to start because the internet and books and so on, it's so, it can be very daunting, I think, for people to uh, if they want to start digging into more information uh, because the internet today and the different channels podcasts youtube videos and so on people don't know where to start so um, my idea was really how can we um, spread the knowledge uh, and uh, give people tools uh, in life what to do and how to act and so on so I put 14 questions together that are kind of in our face daily. Normal questions about does it matter if we vote or not? Uh, does chemtrails exist? And if so, what are they? Uh, vaccinations? Uh, what are GMO? You know, normal questions about the banking system and so on. So I put these questions together to eight amazing, brilliant researchers that have been working in this field for years and years and years and been doing amazing work. And my intention is as well that, so, um, that you know, you, you might click with uh, Ken O'Keefe or Sam Gardner or so the website to these people are in the book as well. So uh, when you have read it, you can dig deeper. That's great. It was a great idea and it, and it came off really well. The questions I was looking through, I went through the questions first and I said, well, why would she ask that? Well, why would she... Well, it works. All those questions actually work, and they really, uh, these researchers that you've chosen are so deep into this that mm. with those simple questions, they were able to relate the whole picture to me. So, yeah. it's, so it was an amazing, it was an amazing read for me yesterday. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, Thank you. Some of these people, it's interesting. They're they're not all from the same uh, cut from the same cloth. They've come at come at it from different angles, and uh, yeah, I was amazed at the similarity of their answers. Were you? Yeah, very much so. I mean, they come from such different backgrounds and different fields as well. Some are a little bit more aggressive in their approach. Some are more, you know, uh, light and so on. But they all come together at the end with they come to the same conclusion, kind of, you know, which is amazing. It really is. Um, I, I feel really honored that they said yes, all of them. And life kind of does that something. Sometimes when you come up with an idea, life gives you green lights, you know, and they, they it's this with this project, it sure was green lights all the way. 
that's great. So the minute you, you the minute you came up with the idea, uh, you started approaching these people, and they all were more than willing to uh, contribute to your effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just you, you know you, when you're in that flow, it's amazing. It was fun. It was really fun to do. Well, I I expected it to be a good uh, read to be able to wake people up. You know, that's what I was thinking. I was looking at it when I started. There, you know, how would someone new to this field come in here? How would they look at this? And they, they yeah. certainly would see similar answers over and over. These similar answers aren't the answers you're going to get on CNN or, or the mainline TV. These are well-researched, deep answers. Uh, but the, the beauty to this book for me was how I felt after I read it. I felt invigorated. I felt like, Great. my God, here are all these people. We're all seeing the same reality because, you know, you turn on TV or, or a, lot, a lot of the reality, even that's on the Internet, is not, is not real reality. These guys no. all, these men and women, all have a really good handle on what's going on, and they're seeing the same thing. So it was like a reinforcing for me saying, yeah, Paul, you're not crazy. All these people no. <laughs> who are deeply intelligent and deep yeah. researchers are seeing the same thing. Uh, have you heard that before? Yeah, absolutely. And it's amazing. And I, if this book existed 20 years ago, I would have been so happy because the, the feeling people, what they feel normally, I, I find when they start to open up and stepping into this kind of world, if you like, is that they feel very alone. And you're not alone because there's hundreds, you know, there's millions of people out there waking up. It's, I, I said before, it's like popcorns, you know, people are waking up like popcorns. It's going yeah. very fast. But 20 years ago, when I started reading, it's, I was alone and I felt very frustrated and angry because nobody wanted to know. My family didn't want to know. My friends didn't want to know. And I thought, my God, you know, why don't they don't, don't they feel the truth somewhere? Because you feel inside, you know, when something isn't true. And uh, this book is it's easy access. It's easy access to give away because I see as well people living together, maybe husband and wife, and one is in this field, or I wouldn't say field, more awake, uh, not looking down at the people. You know, I'm not judging anybody that doesn't want to open the door because it's all about timing in life as well, I find. But uh, it's it's a great gift to maybe just put on the coffee table. And please, all women, don't go and say, listen, you have to read this to your man because they never will then. Right, <laughs> exactly. Just leave it on the table. <laughs> and the people that you picked, Kim, it's really, uh, they're all just full of love. These people yeah. are... Uh, High-level uh, thinkers. Uh, when I was, uh, I've, I've written, a, I wrote a book on ego development, and it's how it's the different levels of consciousness. How as you grow, uh, you see things more differently. Your uh, sense of self gets larger, and you encompass more and more people. And these, all these people are very high-level thinkers, and they're very sweet, nice people. It's like mm. spending a day with. Oh, uh, people who really care about you, telling you how how life is. Um, yeah, it was it's really really good choice of uh, of people that you were interviewing. I I was thinking of coffee table book too, but then I was thinking this morning. I was thinking, boy, it'd be really good if somebody had a little bit of money to buy some of these for uh, doctors' offices. Anywhere yeah. where people have to spend time, and just yeah. have it, uh, just have it be there. You know, some people are going to look at it and and just look at the, some names and decide that that's not where they want to go. But other mm. people, if you just start reading it, I mean, you start reading. Uh, I think you did, it was brilliant to start off with Ken O'Keefe because he's a uh, big, compassionate marine kind of guy who really, yeah. really deeply cares about people. And that comes through in everything that uh, that you had him say. Yeah. 
Yeah, he was. Really... Uh, he's uh, yeah, and he's sharp. I think he doesn't cut corners. You know, he's. Uh, I can listen to him forever. I can listen to everybody, you know. But he's. Uh, he kind of. Uh, it's. Uh, yeah, you don't get tired of listening. No, he's. Uh, and he's. He's not somebody that sits around. He's out no. there doing it, and seeing yeah. it, and. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think they all are. They work, you know, very, very hard and has been for years and years and years. So uh, it's uh, it's nice as well to have their work in the book. So hopefully people will tap into more of their their video channels and uh, websites and so on and read and buy their books and see their documentaries and follow them on Facebook and social media and so on because they have amazing information that carries on every day. It doesn't stop. Right, right. Also, I, it was it was really inspiring to me, and I was hoping that everybody could get a copy. And I can remember when I uh, lived back in the United States, if you uh, request to take a book out, a lot of times the library will buy that book. So uh, yeah. I would suggest I would suggest that you read this that you that you buy this book because I think it's really, I think it's kind of a landmark thing. And uh, it's not, it's not just the only thing. I think I was listening yesterday to an interview that you had, and you were going to do more of these. And so this is this is like the the beginning of uh, of an open dialogue with these people. And, yeah. Uh, I think yeah, that, I can't wait to do volume two. I'm not sure that everybody is going to be the same people, but it's so many questions. I could have, you know, I could have put forty questions in there, but fourteen. Uh, for this book was uh, enough because it's uh, time consuming. I don't want to keep everybody's time either. So they were very generous. But volume two is going to be a volume two, hopefully a series, because I think it's important to get information out there. And it's the hardest as well. It's very difficult to get information out there in a good way. You're doing fantastically as well. Well, thank you. This is uh, This is so nice because these people are... They're really good, caring people, and this is just chock full of information. And uh, when you when you read it, you know they they all answer the same questions, but they answer them a little differently, and they come yeah. from just a thirty degrees to the left, thirty degrees to the right. So you see a lot more um, a lot more diversity about the same type of answer. For example, you've got people like David Icke. Now, David Icke's been doing this since 1990. God, that's 26 years he's been he's been into this and uh, yeah. doing really deep, deep, heavy research. And I, I, I've grown to really trust what he says. So I was inspired by him, and also motivated by the fact that he's so much like Ken O'Keefe or Holy Damagard. And I mean, it was really like. Just like a reassurance that, yeah, you're on the right path. But you also have some new uh, deep researchers, like Sophia S Smallstorm is in this book. And her comments are, are delightful. And also, they're coming from a little bit of a different angle. Uh, mm. She's a 100% she's a researcher. I mean, she's a 100% researcher. And then uh, you've got Zen Gardner, who's coming at it from more of a philosophical angle. Um, but it's 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 an, it's another important piece in this book. So uh, you know, I, I I just congratulate you on being able to put this thing together and get it out there. Uh, it's really nice. What? Uh, so so you did this over a period of six months or so. Yeah, I started in May and we released it on New Year's Eve. That's, so seven. So yeah. That's great. Seven months. Yeah. A and you're and you're self-publishing this one. Yes, yeah. I don't think you know <laughs> if a publishing house comes along, uh, great. But it's not easy with books. This kind of book is, uh, you know, it's not a lot of publishing houses. And it, you know, there's small ones around, absolutely. So, yeah, I keep uh, I keep the door open, of course. Yeah. But at the moment, it's on Amazon, self-published. And it's called "So What Can I Do?" Um, yeah, I think uh, self-publishing is the is the wave of the future. Um, 
when I, I, had, I edited a book with a few other authors called uh, The Post-Conventional Personality, and we published it through Sony Press. And uh, you can't make any money that way. <laughs> mm. If you want to no. make some money on the book, you really have to self-publish it yourself and then also uh, promote it. Yeah. This is going to be very easy to promote because this should be um, – it's so easy to read. It's so uh, so comfortable, and uh, you can just uh, you can feel the love coming from the people you interviewed, coming onto mm. the paper. These people really care about getting this information out, and taking the time and explaining exactly uh, exactly what's going on. Mm. So it's uh, so it's a really it's an inspiring book. I think it'd be good for waking people up, but also you know I really like using it for. My own motivation, my own, uh, you know, reassurance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good starter book, you know. I think uh, because I come from that uh, feeling I had many years ago myself, uh, then with this book, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's easy access to information from eight amazing people. So uh, it's, uh, and, you know, it, it's, with it as well, you you feel that you're not alone, and some of them actually say this in the book as well. Because you you, that's that that's not so nice to feel that. Am I crazy? Am I alone in this? And you know, when when all the friends and family think they don't want to hear, you know, they don't want to listen, and they think you're crazy. So uh, then it's then it's a good book to dig into for sure. Right, uh, you know everybody that's that's involved in the awakening at this point, uh, look around you and you see your friends and family and they look at you like, wow, I can't believe you look at the world like that. Mm. And uh, you have these brilliant people saying, yeah, you're not crazy. This is how things are. And this is how things are because of our research. And I also think it was really interesting how you got their backgrounds in there. Because their mm. backgrounds aren't the same, are they? Not at all, no. Not at all. You have people who have been uh, researching. You have a politician. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, you, uh, you, even, you also ask them about their spiritual practices, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, because I come for, you know, for me, uh, <clears throat> before I went into my spiritual practice, I stepped, we stepped into yoga and the yoga philosophy about, 10 years ago now, I'm very much into to that. And I know if I don't meditate, I lose my balance and so on and I have daily practices, but not many people have that. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, for me, it's interesting to hear because the work they do, I could never do. I, for me, it's very heavy information. Uh, to deal with uh, so it's interesting how do you keep your spirit high you know because uh, it's it's quite hard work they're doing I think but uh, they're doing fantastic really. and and like you said the politician Cynthia McKinney she has done done so much she's so active and she's an amazingly strong woman and uh, she just goes she's one of these women that just you know and she she's she was really interesting to interview as well because she's um, she's been up there you know she's uh, she's been in congress she's been in in very much involved in politics and still are but she sees the united states uh as a killer machine that's her words you know so uh, it's it's quite hard but very true well she ran it was didn't she run for president yeah she t yeah she uh she had, she was, yeah, she, she was on that journey, yes. And, which is really interesting. Uh, yeah. L let's get back to your spiritual practice a little bit. You, you do yoga, but it's not a physical yoga, correct? Yeah, I do physical yoga as well. But my heart is in the Raj yoga, which is the science of the mind. So I stepped into yoga through that path because the physical yoga is... Uh, only like 10% of the yoga philosophy. Uh, the only reason why they started the physical yoga, the yogis in India for thousands of years ago, 
was so they can have an easeful body to sit still in meditation for longer periods of times. Because if your body is not easeful and comfortable, you can't sit still. Your mind will go to that part of the body which is falling asleep or it's not comfortable and so on. So that's the reason why they started the physical yoga, so they can control their mind. Because the body is easy, the mind is a little bit trickier to control, right? Right. <laughs> no, so I do a bit of both. And uh, I, uh, I, I, when, I'm, when I'm out of practice, because uh, we kind of fall off that spiritual razor's edge <laughs> right. uh, sometimes. And uh, it, it affects me, you know, I can, especially my family. They, can, they feel it, they see it, you know. I, the, what do you call it, patience uh, yeah. is lacking. And uh, the, you, you, pick, you know, stuff, nonsense. You, you, if, when I practice every day, um, nonsense and things that, that it, it doesn't bother me, you know. But when I fall off, w which I do sometimes, um, that is more noticeable. So, but it's difficult, you know. It's all about discipline, and the mind kind of goes. And the mind is very lazy, I find. And uh, so, but it's it's funny to watch and uh, contemplate on that who's watching uh, in my mind. And intellect and spirit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's really good to have a practice like that. And, and Oli does the same practice? He meditates every day. He doesn't do physical yoga. He's more, he walks and does other exercises. But he's, uh, he meditates every day. And that keeps him high, I think, or on, uh, in balance. Uh, right. And it's really important for both of you because I know he's out uncovering these conspiracies all the time. I mean, he really yeah. he really gets involved and really sticks his nose in. I know that he pulls you in too. Um, yeah. into this into this milieu that we're all going through struggling through right now. So I thought that yeah. was a really great question to ask at the end and and they all were different, weren't they? Very. Yeah. I was surprised actually. I thought everybody was quite uh, you know, because you think before you, you talk to a person. Uh, but I was surprised that the, not all of them had, uh, sp because I thought doing the work they do, I thought everybody had a kind of um, disciplined practice to keep their spirit high, but no. Not always. Not always. Uh, we had one person that prayed. I'm trying to remember back through them. No, they were all, they were all different. And they all came up with something right away. In other words, it yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't just. Yeah. Kevin Barrett, he's a practitioner Muslim, so he prays uh, five times daily. And uh -huh. that keeps him balanced. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really important. Uh, what, we've, what we've done, uh, we had done meditation and a lot of things. What we've ended up doing is we take a day off. And I know that yeah. seems really lightweight and strange. But it's really done wonders for us. We we take a day where we don't do anything. I don't read uh, the headlines on the on the uh, on the internet. I don't. I I get myself totally out of it, and uh, mm. it, it that really helps us. So yeah, yeah, it does. And disconnect from the screens. We try to do that on Sundays to just not turn the computers on. Only ten minutes in the morning, just if there's something in emergency and then we try not to do and then we go out in nature and you know you really recharge yeah getting away from the internet is really really yeah. important uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah i know zen and i have talked about uh, looking at the screen too much causes us both to be dizzy if we spend mm. like uh five six hours looking at that screen uh, i'm dizzy yeah. for a couple hours yeah Maybe it's our advanced years, but it's uh, uh, it certainly is good to get away, and it's a spiritual practice just to walk away from the, just to walk away from the computer. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that the that the way uh, the book held together, not only with the people, not only with their answers, the consistency of the questions, I thought was really, really important, because you, after about the third person. You you start you start the next chapter by saying, "Oh, I wonder how Zen's going to answer that one. 
Well, I wonder mm -hmm. if he feels the same way about that. And yeah. uh, and when you read into it, uh, it's a yes and no. Yeah, he sees mm -hmm. the same thing, but he's seeing it from a little bit more, uh, a little different position than than even Oli did, who's a good friend of his, or, or Sophia yeah. did. It's really a fascinating book. So you're planning on, on doing another one, maybe, maybe with the yeah. same people, maybe with different people. What do you think? Yeah, well, maybe it's not, it's not a maybe. I will start, but not until June, probably, um, or midsummer. And uh, yeah, I got questions uh, in my mind already. And, uh, um, you know, I will approach the same people. But if uh, I can understand as well, I mean, David Icke is doing a world tour. So maybe he hasn't got the time or but I will approach the same. But I have some there's a lot of nice, good, hardworking researchers out there that's got amazing information. So it might be a little bit different. And uh, I would love as well if people email me any questions that they think, uh, please, you know, ask this question. I want to know about this and so on. So they could email me uh, and also any people that you might want to have in the next book. So uh, please help, you know, to get the information out there. So you can email me to uh, so what can I do 2016 at gmail.com. And uh, we get more questions in the next book, 40, another 14 questions. Right. The whole focus might change depending on what's going on in the world. Yeah. No, so these 14 questions that, was, that, were, that are in this first volume, are kind of, you know, for me, the normal, you and I probably know uh, a lot around this, but and anybody who hasn't uh, read anything around any of these questions might be, uh, might be a lot, you know, which is great. But the next book, I think, might be more, I don't know, it's, uh, it's more from my heart, I think. <laughs> so it's going to be, it's gonna, I'm really looking forward to doing the next one. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. The questions were, uh, were very cool. The question on money shocked me because I was wondering, my, this is such a little component of it. But no, it was really, it was really a key question. And they it's all, it's a biggie. It's a biggie. And they, and they all expanded uh, on it into their different uh, niches, uh, how mm. they saw it, saw it coming. I thought it was a brilliant question. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it uncovered a lot of the control system, how they all see the control system being put together. Uh, yeah. So that was really interesting. Yeah, I was sitting here thinking of well, what people could be in the next book. That, if, if, if the next book just contains these people, I'll be happy as a clam. Uh, so, so you don't have to change. But I was thinking, the guy, uh, a guy that I've been reading uh, daily lately has been John Rapoport uh, mm. because of his work with the Sika hoax, and yeah. uh, you know it'd be interesting to see him weigh in because he comes from an investigative journalist, someone who is mostly focused on medical issues. So he might yeah. be an, another interesting one to re to to approach, but. But if you stick with these same people, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> no, and like I said, there's so many fantastic people out there. So who knows? But another eight people might be completely different. Might be, it hasn't 100% landed yet. I just know I need to do it. Uh, you know, you have that calling sometimes uh, that you just need to do it. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. But please, if you, if you, if you, think, about, if you think about people or questions, please mail me. Yeah, if we're all going through the awakening together, we always say. And For sure. we're all learning from one another and we're all giving one another a leg up to try to um, figure out what's going on and how we can stop this madness. Yeah. And, and so um, uh, Kim is inviting you to communicate with her and uh, help her with ideas for people or, or ideas for questions that you'd like to ask. Um, this format is so cool because it's like a panel discussion without people jumping all over one another, you know. Uh, you float mm -hmm. the question out there and everybody has time to answer it and answer it thoroughly. 
and you can go back and you can look at specific questions with the different people and you can really feel their different uh, different viewpoints it's a uh, it's a really cool format thanks for thinking of it <laughs> <laughs> huh. well i'm i'm just an instrument you know right yeah. so uh so this is available through amazon do you have a uh, do you have a website that they can go to to uh, to get this uh no, it's just on Amazon, Paul, at the moment, uh, and I think that's just the, it's easier there. It's uh, on uh, .com and .co.uk. It's on Barnes and Nobles as well, um, and uh, yeah, get it there. Spread the word. Yeah, so you can so you can pick it up there. There are other uh, there are other type of things on Oli's site. This is uh, this is the real important thing right now is. Is this so? What can I do to get this thing started? If uh, if you're thinking about uh, getting something for somebody that might be waking up, although you know it's really hard to uh, it's hard to wake people up. They kind of either they do it when they want to do it, and uh, yeah. and that's about it. But if this just happens to be on the coffee table, or just happens to be in their environment, this could really go a long way to catapulting mm -hmm. someone into into being awake. I loved all the people in it. I loved your questions. And it was an enjoyable afternoon for me yesterday. Thank so, you. Thank you very Great. much. So that's brilliant. <laughs> so, it's interesting, I find, as well, because all of them, like you said, they're all different, very different, coming from different backgrounds and doing different work, uh, but in this field. But they all kind of come as well when, when the the question comes together, so what can I do? They kind of all say that you have to start with yourself, which is amazing. I really find that's the yoga philosophy for me as well. You know, you have to start with yourself, come down from your head down into your heart. The longest journey for that we make, I think, you know, a lot of people say that. But that, uh, that really warmed my heart, listening to them and making the book. But start with yourself and then... You know, we can do something. Everybody can do something. But people feel hopeless, but we can do something. Right, but it is the longest journey from the head down into the heart. And I know. Right. <laughs> it shouldn't be, though, should it? <laughs> no, it shouldn't be. And, and all, these, all these people are in that journey. You know, yeah. All these people no, are. No, we all are. Yeah. Yeah, we're all going through this. And, you know, some of them started off by doing some uh, real hardcore research. I mean... If you look at uh, Sophia Salstorm or, or David Icke, they've really done some heavy-duty uh, mental work to get to put all this stuff together. But notice where they are. They're still in mm. their heart. They're yeah. still coming from a loving place, which is a real important element in this book, too, I think. So that's really good. So uh, I just want to, uh, do, do, I want to make sure that they can get their book. And they can get it through Amazon.com, and they can communicate with you. What is your uh, What is your email again, Kim? So, what can I do? Twenty sixteen at gmail.com. Right, and uh, I want to encourage them to feel free to communicate with you uh, on this book and uh, and it's, help you yeah. with help you with the new the new book that you might be getting getting started with in July. But this thing is a I think it's uh, it's a really precious possession, and uh, to have uh, these people, uh, all their comments together in a loving way in one in one book is a real is a real gift. So, is there anything you'd like to say before we uh, we end this little short but potent interview? Um, you're not alone. <laughs> cool. You're not alone. We're, you know, we're all together, and uh, let's make a difference. That's great. Thank you very much, Kim. It's been it's been Thank a pleasure. I, it was a pleasure yesterday reading the book, and it's a pleasure today uh, talking to you about it. And uh, just uh, good luck to you and Oli, and uh, hope that we can talk again later. Thank you so much. Bye.